Welcome to my lecture online. In this video and the next video to come, we're going to explore at a fairly top level the six different techniques to solve AC circuits or sinusoidally varying circuits. So here the three that we're going to deal with here is the null analysis, the mesh analysis, and the superposition theorem. And of course these are some very simplistic examples. Later on we'll show you some more complicated examples of how to actually work out these types of problems. But in the null analysis, we're using the Kirchhoff's current rule that says that all the currents entering a node is equal to all, all the currents leaving a node. So here we have an example. We have a voltage source. We have a node here that is at a particular voltage, so let's call it V. We have a current going into the node and two currents leaving the node. And according to the rule is that the current into the node is equal to the two currents leaving the node. In this particular example, there's two currents leaving. There could be more currents leaving. There could be more currents entering. You'll never, of course, have a situation where you have currents entering and no currents leaving. That's not even possible. We also need to realize, using Ohm's law, that a current can, can be calculated by taking the voltage divided by the impedance. So in this case, the input current will be equal to the difference of the voltage of the source and the voltage at the node divided by the impedance on that branch. The current leaving I1 that will be equal to the difference between the voltage at the node and the voltage at the end of this branch whatever that may be so let's call it V1 and so the difference of those two voltages divided by the impedance on that branch will be the current leaving the node I1 and I2 is the same thing it'll be the difference between the voltage at the node and whatever the voltage is on the other end of the branch the difference of those two divided by the impedance on that branch and so we have this equation which typically can then be solved for the voltage at the node. So the nodal analysis is typically used to find the voltage at a particular node. The mesh analysis, which can also be called the Kirchhoff's voltage loop methodology, it's the voltage loop uh, theory of Kirchhoff's laws. What we do here is we recognize that there's going to be current in each mesh or in each loop. You identify the voltage sources, you identify all the impedances in the circuit, and then what you do is you go around each mesh and you add up all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops. For example, in this case, we start at A, we go across the voltage source, so we have a voltage rise of V1. Then we have a voltage drop across this impedance because we go in the same direction around the loop as the current I1, so it's minus Z1 times I1. And then when we go across this impedance right here, we have a drop because of current I1, but a rise because of current I2. So it's minus Z2 I1, and minus times minus becomes plus Z2 I2 across this particular impedance. And then when we complete the whole loop, then we can see that when we do this mesh analysis of the first mesh, that adds up to zero. Then we do the same for the second loop, starting at B. Going across this impedance, we have a voltage drop because of I2 and a voltage rise because of I1. Then we have a voltage drop across Z3 and a voltage drop across the voltage source because we are going around the mesh from the positive end of the voltage source to the negative end, so therefore it's a voltage drop. When we go around, around the mesh, we can then see we add up all the voltages and they add up to zero. The third method is called the superposition theorem. Of course, we have a very simplistic example here, but notice we have a sinusoidally varying current and we have a, a steady DC voltage. So we take a circuit like this and we break it apart in a multitude of circuits. In this case, we only need two because we only have two sources. So the number of sources you have typically dictates the number of sub circuits you're going to end up with. Notice that the first thing we do is we get rid of the current source and we only keep the voltage source. Now, if we only have a DC voltage, a capacitor becomes like an open circuit and a current also, a current source also becomes like an open circuit. So this is the circuit that we end up with only the voltage source, whatever, which it means since there's no complete round circuit, we have no current flowing in this circuit when we only have the DC voltage and the current source is gone. When we remove the voltage source, notice instead of the voltage source, we have a short circuit. When we remove the current source, we have an open circuit. When we remove the voltage source, we have a short circuit. And the capacitor stays because if the current source is not a DC current, but an alternating current, then of course we're going to have current flowing 
uh, in and out of the capacitor. So this is what the circuit will look like with only a current source. So those are the basic rules that we follow when we have the superposition theorem. And again, it helps us find the currents in a circuit by subdividing a circuit like this, which may be more complicated, into circuits which are much easier to solve. And then we simply just add the results together, the voltages and the currents. For example, the voltage at the node and the currents to the circuit. You simply add them from the individual sub-circuits. That will then give you the result of the original circuit. So those are the three first techniques. In the next video, we'll show you the next three techniques, again, at the top level, before we delve into some really good examples to show you how to utilize these techniques in the first place. And that's how it's done.